I bought a boat with negative $4,000 in my bank account. Oh, okay, I'll take out my notepad. You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. We just sailed back from the Bahamas. We were putting our catamaran up for sale. I had $5,000 in a credit card to my name and I started swiping that thing, buying flights and looking for my next boat. Stupid. I immediately started applying for boat loans, which did not work. Okay, so it's been a week since we've been back in Fort Lauderdale and I've already checked out two sailboats. I'm off to see my third one. Head of the green turtle, baby. Let's go, boy. Let's <laughs> go. We are headed to go check out the boats right now. This is Mornay's catamaran that he is living on. And that's the boat back there that we're about to look at. At this point, Mornay had only sent me one picture of the boat. It was this picture right here. And although I asked for more, I took his word for it and I flew out there anyways. You man. <laughs> Mornay's running on one cylinder right now. There we go. You got it. All right, so back here is uh, the boat. Mornay is about to show it to me. Oh my gosh. How the f do you expect me to fix that, man? Like you're talking patching from here to here to do it yeah. correctly, like a big ass f patch. A serious patch. This is gonna be a project. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can, I don't know about this one, man. That full of The left side of the boat looks amazing. The right side of the boat looks like it, like it got broken half. I like the boat, man. I can see the potential. But when you think about all the damn pumps and hoses and electric wires and all that shit that has to be replaced, this is gonna be a lot. I got a lot to think about. So I flew back from the Bahamas. I got on Facebook Marketplace and I found a super awesome boat right here in Fort Lauderdale. It's literally a childhood dream of mine to be a pirate. And this thing was badass. My dream boat is a pirate ship. This is a replica of a 600 BC Phoenician ship that's done a 6,000 mile crossing across the Atlantic. What the hell, dude? That is nothing like the post. Okay, maybe now is not the time to become a pirate, so I started looking for boats that were a little more realistic. I am driving up to Fort Pierce. I've got two boats here. One of them might be a winner. Let's go. First up, we got the 44 Beneteau Orion. kind of tight if I had four people staying on the boat. But for 93, it didn't have much wear and tear. It doesn't have an AC unit. Well, it's no shore power. It's all, it's a self-sufficient boat. So now we're gonna go see that 39, uh, 393 Beneteau. It's three cabin version, a little smaller. Next boat. So the battery died just as I was getting on that boat. And luckily it did to prevent y'all from seeing that piece of shit. That guy needs to fix his post. It's annoying because people post these pictures and stuff and you drive two hours. I drove over two hours to get here. Uh, I got one more boat I'm gonna go see. Actually, I don't know if it's one more boat I'm gonna see, but I got a boat in Panama that I really wanna fly out and go see before I make my decision. So, maybe 
you next time the camera starts rolling, we'll be in Panama. So I booked a flight to Panama three days from now. And in that time, I heard back from all of the lenders that I applied for boat loans from. And I was denied by every single one of them. And since I applied to like 15 or 20, my credit score went from almost an 800 down to like a 600. They just dinged my credit every time. My credit score went way down. So now I'm flying to Panama and I gotta figure out where I'm gonna get this money if I do find a boat. And I am now at the realization that a boat loan is not one of them. But for now, I'm gonna keep swiping that credit card and looking for boats. Stupid. Woo! We are in Panama, baby, and this place is a jungle. Just landed. I've been driving about an hour and a half now, and uh, we're headed to Shelter Bay Marina. Going over the Panama Canal. Super sick trip. I'm excited. So we are about to check out Chifundo. It's a 56 Du Four. The center cockpit, table, kitchen. You have one bedroom here, and you wrap the corner. There's one bathroom. There is a huge editing station. Come this way into another bathroom and another bedroom, and the fourth bedroom. You know, boats are never what they claim to be in the listing you get there and you see things wrong with it and you see all these expenses that are going to add up so on a whim i am headed to linton bay marina which is uh, about an hour and a half from here i called the marina and the lady barely spoke english and said that there's monohulls for sale there may only be one there may be a few and i'm going to uh take my chances and see if i can find another boat for sale in Panama. So let's go. All right, we are at the Linton Bay Marina. About to check out a few boats. Parts for the water pump, but dude said he would give me this boat for free and it's floating. So I'm about to check it out. It's a pilot house. Yeah, I see why it's for free. Alright, so still at the marina. Uh, it's beautiful here. Didn't quite get the boat I was hoping for. There's, there's a couple beat up ones that they want low low prices for, so I just gotta outweigh my options. This is actually Parlay Revival's boat here. It's so funny to look back on this footage because at the time I didn't know any of these guys and now they're good buddies of mine. These two catamarans belong to Colin from Parlay Revival and David Shee from David She Sales. Two guys I'd be meeting two months from this very moment. Colin took on a 450 Lagoon that had been severely hurricane damaged and rebuilt it with his buddies. If you watch his channel, you will learn a ton. Now David's, he's Um, David, David Shibit has a knack for popping up on other people's YouTube channels. <laughs> All right, so. And I'm sure Colin would agree with me. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> All this was filmed anyways. David Sh David Sh Should I say it again? I'll say it again. David Sh <laughs> They're both super cool guys with awesome channels, so check them out. I'll put their links in the description below. Well, that concludes my boat search in Panama. So, boat search continues. <laughs> I'm uh, actually, more, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I might take on that project in the Bahamas because I could literally gut that boat and turn it into whatever I want. I'm gonna go back and look at the GoPro footage of it to see uh, if what I'm thinking can be done and we'll see what happens.
So at this point, the catamaran still hasn't sold. I got about $1,000 left in my account. We still got some repairs to do on the cat, so that's just gonna keep going down. So I am still swiping that credit card. That's not smart. It's now real to me that I am not gonna get a loan, so my next option is to try and get a hard money loan. But right now, I gotta fly out to St. Martin and look at this boat that just popped up. Let's go, baby. We are in St. Martin. About to go look at some boats. Planes literally land right on the ocean. All right, I made it to St. Martin and Adrian picked me up in his dinghy. We're headed out to go check out the boat. Okay, we are on board. This wind indicator. But, not, but now it's up. Down. I like this. The headroom. You know, that might be a good selling point. I, I haven't found a boat with a big enough liquor cabinet yet. <laughs> That's why this has plenty of storage for the bottles. All right, we got the Genoa up now. I was wondering where the hell, which direction you were going, man. You're crazy. Looks good. Looks real good, man. I absolutely love this boat. It was four cabins, four bathrooms. It just seemed like a well taken care of boat. So I went and looked at a few more boats since I had three days left in St. Martin, just in case. But all I could think about was this 50 foot Beneteau. I liked it so much. In fact, I made an offer on it. He had it listed at 179 and I offered him 150 and he actually accepted it. And where are you gonna get the money? We're getting to that. So I just flew back from St. Martin last night and while I was there, I noticed another boat posted for sale in St. Augustine, Florida. So I jumped in the car, I'm headed up there. It's a five hour drive. I really hope this boat is what it looks like online. If this St. Augustine boat isn't good, I'm gonna buy the one in St. Martin. I have a, have a little hole in the side there. Is the autopilot work on it? We actually engaged it when we were on the sea trial. I wonder why he changed his mind so fast. It's, it there. makes me think like he found something wrong with the boat and was like... He doesn't seem like that type to me. Yeah. He called me up and said he had to leave town. And I was like on his deathbed or something. I said he was gonna die. It's more medical, like you think yeah. of his family yeah. emergency. Has it been hauled out any time recently? Um, like the bottom, does it need to be done and stuff? You know if the engine hours are accurate? Um, I know the engine hour meter works. So I would assume they're accurate. Yeah, the engine is actually in good shape. Or I'll take all this crap off. You know if uh, the fridges work? Uh, I believe everything works. So does it have shore power? Yeah, it's plugged in right now. But you have both of those switches off. Oh, so it's three heads. Definitely a little more of a project than the picture showed. However, I am not scared. We just gotta talk numbers. All right, this guy's got it up for 150, and I just put a hundred thousand dollars cash offer on the table. So after negotiating with the seller, he countered back at 130. We agreed on 120 for the boat in St. Augustine. No, I don't have $100,000 cash for all you people that think I'm rich. I found a hard money lender who actually is a good friend of mine. I get a call from an old buddy of mine, Steve. He said he just bought a house and he wants me to fix it up. I'm like, Steve, I'm sorry, I wanna buy a boat and sail around the world. But I figured this would be a great opportunity. So I approached him with the question. If I come to your house and fix it up, 
would you be willing to give me a one-year loan for a boat? And without hesitation, he said yes. How are you gonna pay Steve back in one year? YouTube, hopefully. You're done. In order to pay him his interest for this loan, I'm gonna go work at his house and pimp it out for the next two weeks. So he's gonna get a bunch of accent walls and stuff. I'm actually headed there right now. All right, we are here. We're about to get to work. Got my trailer. So you walk in, there's gonna be a big stone wall. This wall is gonna be this awesome granite here. This is a translucent granite and it's gonna be put on this wall. Love the job, but now I have a big decision to make. Now I have two verbal offers that have been accepted, and there's pros and cons to both of them. And this is the moment where I come in. So through Ralph's entire boat search, we were in touch a lot. He had never sailed on a monohull before, and I had had a decent amount of experience sailing an older sailing vessel. So Ralph really valued my opinion, and I'd give him advice wherever I could. So let's compare the two boats. One's located in St. Martin, and one is a lot closer in my home state of Florida. Secondly, one is a 2012, and the other is a 2006. So it's six years older, but that's still not too old as far as boats go. Then we get into the water and the fuel tankage. This is a big deal when you're talking about crossing oceans. So the one in St. Martin has 90 gallons of water and 60 gallons of fuel. The one in St. Augustine has 210 gallons of water and 100 gallons of fuel. Both of them have pretty low engine hours, but sometimes this is not always correct. Now we get down to the propulsion. The one in St. Martin has sail drives, and although these are said to be a little more efficient, they have seals that need to be replaced. If I had to choose, I would prefer a straight shaft on a boat. It's a more bulletproof setup in my opinion. And then we got the sail setup. The in-mast roller furling is very convenient, but sometimes they can get caught up inside the mast. Whereas your standard fully battened sail is a little more foolproof. Repair costs. To me, this is tough to tell because one of them looks really good, the other one looks like it has a bunch of surface dust. Sometimes a little pressure washing can go a long way. Now we get to the price. And I'm not gonna say one's better than the other because the cheaper one probably needs a little more work. And finally, did I get an inspection on them? I paid a guy a couple hundred bucks in St. Martin, but due to the high demand of boats here in the States during COVID, I decided to waive the inspection on the one in St. Augustine. So once we narrowed it down to the main boat choices and weighed our pros and cons, we made a decision. I just got a boat. I sent an offer in and they accepted and we we're about to wire the escrow account funds to lock this deal in. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Congratulations. So once the decision was made, Raf asked me if I would help deliver the boat to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So we packed our bags and headed to the new spirit animal. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots around my neck. Self-respect. Going 